Hello. I'm here with the lovely Iceland author of this fabulous book which comes out next month. Next month? Uh, yes, uh, on, on, July, uh, on July. ebook and then uh, then in October on paper. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's on the way and I may be slightly biased thinking it's a wonderful book. You might oh. be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I am here with the wonderful Quentin Bates, author and translator par excellence. Eigum við kannski að gera það bara á íslensku, Quentin? Jú, ég hef ekki bara að gera það, það er í góðu legi. Það er íslensku og þá engin vita hvað við erum. Nei, ég meitt, ég meitt, það er alltaf svona gaman, þú veist, þá hérna, já. En það er vorðulega skrítið að tala við þig ennsku, sko, við erum aldrei að tala við saman ennsku, nema svona í svona samkvæmum, sko. Já, ég veit það, mjög furðulegt. It's yeah, really, it really weird to speak to each other in English because we usually strange. don't do that. <laughs> it feels sli slightly wrong. It feels a little naughty speaking English. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, should I jump in with a question? Yes. Are we, are we first going to speak about my books and then yours or just do it as we go along? Should we just go where nature takes us? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to tell me about Stella and Ursula and Odin and all these wonderful characters that you came up with? Because it's, um, yes. it's quite something. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with this book. Uh, it's, a, it's a standalone uh, after, yeah. that came after my trilogy about the drug smugglers, but this is a, a different kind of story. It's a political, it has a, like a kind of a political twist, even if it's not exactly a political thriller, do you think? Um, mm, no, it's not a political, it's, no. it's difficult to put a, to put a yeah. handle on it because it's so many things. Yes, it's the, the got... French are marketing it as a, a cruel version of Borgen. You know, um, <laughs> the Danish TV show about the politicians. Yes, it, it's not nice, is it though? Borgen is quite nice. This this isn't nice at all. No, it's it's it it kind of. I mean, the book is about um, a woman that enters politics. Uh, she's she's offered this opportunity and she jumps at it because she sees that she could maybe make a difference. She she comes in mm -hmm. as an out of parliament minister for just one year for a minister that's sick. Uh, and um, so she is a uh, minister of the interior, which in Iceland means transportation and, uh, and justice as well. Justice, yes. Yeah. So uh, she jumps at, at this opportunity because she sees that there are uh, things that she could do. For example, uh, something about uh, the, the status of asylum seekers mm. and refugees in Iceland. So she wants to. Um, you know, uh, he wants to shake up the the, uh, yeah. director, the immigration directorate. Yes. Which let, let's not say too much about them. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's something that needs doing, and she sees this opportunity, jumps at it, but then thinks uh, when she's uh, almost she hasn't entered the ministry when she hits like a, a brick wall, uh, which is a conspiracy, big big mm. conspiracy, and then it's. It's also, uh, I mean, there are different points of view in this. It's the minister, it's her uh, driver slash lifeguard and uh, mm. a cleaning lady in the ministry. And, and yes, the, woman. the witch. Yes, yes, the witch, yes. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't resist it, could you, putting some magic in there? No, I, I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it really so, works. She, she's, yeah. she's a pretty decent witch. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> she's uh, she's uh, uh, an immigrant or uh, an immigrant witch that uses old Icelandic magic um, together with her own uh, a little bit supernatural powers, or at least what she thinks are supernatural powers. But it's uh, it's not a supernatural story at all. But she uses this kind of magic to enhance aspects of her life, which um, yes, her disastrous love life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. she's a pretty amazing character thank you yes yeah. i like her so where yeah. did the story come from where did you where did you dig all this up because there are so many threads in there you must have this must have been 
cooking away in your head for a long time. Yes, um, I, I, I mean, like everything, I mean, there is usually a story in reality that's uh, more incredible or worse, you know, uh, yeah. than, a, than any crime story you could come up with. So, uh, I mean, yeah, there, facts are I, always top fiction. Yes, and there have been, you know, scandals around politicians in Iceland, and I kind of like cherry picked uh, different things from different. Uh, scandals and made up this uh, one story because what always drives me to come up with a plot is this what if question you know what if mm. this minister that was uh, forced to resign was in fact innocent or what if this guy that some people suspected was in fact guilty you know and then, then you mm. kind of want to know what and goes it, on yeah. behind the scenes you know and what if x is really covering up for y and yeah 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 how it how it works and yeah yeah and uh, so um, as i always like to prepare my stories quite well i um i i had the help of the ministry of the, of the of justice in fact and um, okay. and yes so i was um uh, that was the present minister <laughs> Yeah. So was this, did you, do, you, do you have ministerial assistance all the way up to the top? Well, I wouldn't say that, but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've, uh, of course I've worked for the, before in my, in my former career, I worked for the Ministry of Education, so I know how ministries work and uh, the hierarchies in there and, and how it is basically uh, one big office that, uh, full of people that do things that nobody knows what are or Right. Okay. Maybe not yeah. even useful all the time, <laughs> but uh, but no, the min the Ministry of Justice is quite interesting because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a ministry that uh, handles a lot of things for a lot of people that are you know sensitive in a way. You mm. know, they they hand handle uh, uh, you know uh, Icelandic citizenship. They handle uh, all sorts of stuff for for immigrants and asylum seekers. Mm. They handle uh, police corruption and all the police and, and judiciary systems and all that. So, uh, so there is a, they, they uh, I mean, it's probably the only ministry in Iceland that has a locked door, you know. Okay, you can't yeah. just walk in. No, usually you can walk in right into yes. the table of the minister, you know. Uh, like the minister of transportation, I mean, his door is open all the time. You know? Yeah, because yeah, I've, I've interviewed a couple of ministers in the past. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just walk straight in, no problem yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. But but this ministry is is sensitive in a way because it has to do with uh, you know there's a lot of people that tend to be angry at the minister of of justice for you know different reasons, mm. and um, and that is what the story is about. This woman that enters the ministry starts working, and suddenly there is like this wave of hate over her, and this is actually inspired what uh, happens to uh, female politicians in Iceland. Mm. You can see that uh, women yeah, in yeah, politics in Iceland, they have a very, very yeah. short yeah. career. Yeah. There have been demonstrations outside women, women, female politicians' houses and paint on yeah. the walls and all sorts, but it doesn't happen to male politicians. No, no, no. Which is, is quite bizarre. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's, it seems to be that women in power tend to spark some sort of, yeah, very strange emotions in a lot of people. So, yeah, and, in, uh, and not just in men. No, I, I think it's yeah. a, it's both actually. Yeah, it to be <laughs> there's the a lot of lot of women that hate women in power. Uh, also, I mean, it's, <laughs> misogyny is everywhere. <laughs> it's on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, unfortunately, but uh, I think of course more women tend to see this pattern and and try to back up their their sisters, if you can say so. But uh, yeah, yeah. But I think it goes everywhere. It's a societal thing. It's not a man problem. It's a, it's a it's a societal it's, it's something mm. in the structure of our society and and uh, and regarding i mean i think i mean when you when you think of it that uh, iceland sometimes has almost half of parliamentarians female mm. uh, it, this it's is very kind of strange because we we consider ourselves very egalitarian and um, and we have very good women women's rights in iceland but I mean, if you just open up a, a, a comment, um, what, what they call the the online comment, yeah, yeah, the comments for yeah. the for the papers, and you see a clear pattern there. 
and this is about um, in the story I use a lot of uh, online abuse and uh, mm. and uh, that that was interesting I, to translate. Yes, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and this is all this. I didn't make this up. I just took it, cut and paste straight from the online comments about women politicians. Oh, this was real stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not the worst worst I found. You know, I just. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's it it goes into. I mean, if you disagree with a female politician. Uh, if someone uh, disagrees, he does something unpopular, or is uh, you know there is a scandal or something, or just takes a takes a makes a decision that isn't popular, uh, a man would get criticised, you know, mm. uh, and get difficult questions and all that, which is fair. But women tend to get you know like a wave of abuse and hate, and, uh, and it's far more personal as well. Yes, and violence, threats of violence and rape. Yeah. Constantly, so that that was uh, that's uh, what I I have happened to my minister in the story. Yes, Ursula. Yeah. Ursula. Yeah. So she's as she tough is. as old boots, though. She really is. She's a very um, very weather-beaten lady. Yes. Yes. Mm. She has been. Uh, she's a character. She's been in uh, in uh, Liberia in the Ebola epidemic, and she is. She has been in. Um, uh, working for the Red Cross and uh, in Syria in the war, and um, so she's not uh, she's not uh, very sensitive. She's but no she still finds she? herself in trouble in Icelandic politics. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then she well, we can't say too much because um, we don't want to drop any spoilers. No, we don't. No. But then yeah. there's, there's other, the other thread as well with the Faroese lady and the policeman and uh, yes, yes, and all the rest of it that that's good. Yeah. And, and the newsreader as well is interesting. So there's, there are so many threads in there. Yeah. And of course, Pieter. Yes, the, uh, yeah. the, the homeless man. And it, it, that's also something I, I have been interested in for a long time, is how it is to be homeless, you know, living on a street. Um, how did you research that? Did you, go, you didn't go and live on the street. Uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I I have known homeless people in the past, and I I you know allow myself some uh, time to uh, speak to people in that situation. Um, I have, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've read a lot of research about it, but mostly just chit chatting with people about how their lives are, and it's. Um, interesting things that come up that you wouldn't expect like uh, like uh, quite a few homeless people have told me that uh, when you become homeless and after after a certain time on the street uh, time um, changes you know your sense of time uh, becomes different okay and instead of living in a kind of a linear way towards something your mm -hmm. your feeling of time starts to go in circles Okay. And uh, when you're you, and and people tend to go also in circles, like in Reykjavik, they take the whole uh, uh, the same circle, and and so the yeah, life yeah. is kind of circular. You go a certain circle, uh, you feel that time is a circle, and this man in the story he suddenly realizes that he's been going around in circles for many many years, mm. but he always was on his way to Denmark, yes, where and he wants the girl he left behind here. all those years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, anyway, yes. But, yeah, but I would urge people to just get it. It's um, it's quite something. What? But what's next? Well, um, I yeah, have. Uh, a, is this a series coming up next? Or? Yes, there's a series coming up next. The the first book is already out in Iceland. Was in, out in Iceland uh, uh, before last Christmas, and I've just finished book two in that series. So okay. you have to translate fast now. Get going, That's Quentin. A sensitive, <laughs> it's a sensitive subject because I had, yeah, okay, let's get on to that later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But what about you? I mean, you, um, of course, you are my um, dear, dear translator, but uh, I mean, do you consider yourself a translator? Or, I mean, because um, I always feel that you're not a translator, you're just a crime writer that happens to speak Icelandic, so you translate your friend's books occasionally. What, what's your self-image as a translator? Uh, I have no idea, really. I just sit in front of the computer and, and beaver away at stuff. And if I get bored with something and I've got something else to move on to, 
Yes. And then the deadline. And you're I look over the top of the laptop and I can see the deadlines approaching coming up. Yeah. So I think I better get on with this one now. Oh, I haven't done that yet. I need to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty much how it is. Because at the moment, I've, having finished this one, um, mm. I'm now working on this one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, yes. Reverend by Solveig Pálsdóttir. Reverend uh, by the, the, the Fox by Solveig Pálsdóttir. And, yeah. and you are next in the queue. Uh huh. So you, I, I'm three quarters through Solveig's book, and then you're next in the queue, and then there's Solveig's next book, which is uh, Fjötr, uh, Shackles. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That just won just the Icelandic won, crime fiction prize. Yes, he just won the Drop of Blood for the Icelandic crime fiction award for the best yeah. Icelandic crime novel. Yeah, which, that I won last won year. as well. Yeah. Twice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're translating, you know, the cream of Icelandic crime fiction. Of course you are. I like to think so, yes. You know, uh, <laughs> no, no disrespect to Arnold and Irsa and all the rest. No, no, but, no. Uh, yeah. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. But you have a book out, just out, haven't I you? I do, yes. Yes. Show I it have. to me, please, because I don't have a copy yet. The, the postal services in Iceland are horrid now. Uh, the postal malice. services here are absolutely appalling. I mean, it, it takes... I had a package come from Belgium last week, which is... I mean, Belgium is just over there. Yeah. And it took three and a half weeks. <laughs> but, they probably uh, had to disinfect what? the package 10 times on the way, yeah? Uh, who knows? But mm. it, it finally got here anyway. Yeah. But yeah, this, this is the latest one. And I don't know if there'll be any more, but we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Um, and this is the book that didn't want to be written because it, it was a pig to write. Was it? Why? It made, I, it just didn't want to be written ah. for some reason, but it's no, it, it finally made it through. I had to go twice to the publisher and beg, please, can I have more time? I can't finish this book. It, I'll pay you the advance, but I can't do this. But, it, but it's here now anyway. Yeah. Congratulations. It, thank you. And, um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a good sign, really, because it's normally the ones I'm quite happy with that people don't, that people don't seem to like very much. Yes, yes, I, I, I have not, it's the same with me. I mean, yeah. usually the ones I want to throw in the bin are the ones that, you know, get the awards. Yeah, well, I haven't had any awards, so I've had to... <laughs> I'm, oh. an, I'm an award-free writer. Yeah, okay. I'll have to think of something, because you're, you're a strange guy, aren't you? Because you're a hybrid writer. You're not, you're Icelandic, Icelandic but you're uh, not really Icelandic, and then you're English, but your stories... Well, in really Iceland. It's like, where are you? Are you Icelandic or not? You're not eligible for uh, the Icelandic prices because uh, even if your it's, stories are Icelandic, in fact, you write, in, you write them in English. So I write them in English. I'm not, I'm not eligible for things like the Patrona because I, no. I write in English. Yes. So essentially, it's me and Michael Ridpath who aren't eligible for the Patrona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, I'll, I'll think of a, a, a certain award, like the Nordic Hybrid Awards. So I can win it ne this year, and Michael can win it next year, and then then I can win it, and then Michael. Christopher and... Pettersson, you can. Of like, course, yes, Christopher Pettersson yeah. can win it as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can have we can rotate it every three years. Yeah, sounds good. I like the idea of that. Yeah, we can yeah. we can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then there's and then there's, um, there's Jan Kostin Wagner as well, the German yeah. guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we'd all have a pretty good shot at winning it every four years. Yes. That's excellent. That's almost like the Icelandic Crime Fiction Awards. There's like 30 crime writers in Iceland, and uh, so you always have a good chance. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that's still quite a lot for a country like Iceland, though, isn't it? That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a lot. Because you know, when I went there first, all those years ago, yeah, which was way back in the 20th century. Yeah. Then there was Birgitta Haldusdottir. Yes. And that was it. Yeah. And the book, the bestseller lists were full of um, worthy biographies of seafaring heroes and politicians and captains of industry yeah. and translated crime fiction. So there was Desmond Bagley and Hammonds and Innes yeah. and things like that. Mm. And there was no homegrown crime fiction at all. Mm. And Not and until uh, Gunnar Gunnarsson and Arnaldur and Ivar yeah. and them started. Yeah, but especially Arnaldur, when he was taken yeah. seriously in Germany. 
Oh, yes. And that really sort of pushed things into action, didn't it? And now it's completely the other way around. And you can't throw a brick in Reykjavik now without hitting a crime writer. I know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're coming out of the walls and every... Yeah, you can't I move know. for them. And the amazing thing is that there, there, there are actually quite a few good ones here as well. There's some very fun. good ones, yeah. There when really you consider it's such, a, it's such a new thing here, you know, it's like uh, we have like a 30 year old tradition of this and uh, people are still, you know, um, people are already, you know, getting the hang of this. So many good yeah. ones. Some people have got, you, it didn't take you long, long to get the hang of it, did it? No, it just, uh, I, I, th I think, I mean, um, I think uh, maybe because I've read a lot of crime fiction in my uh in my life and that's always i think the key to it is that uh you yeah know, you've got you know to read. the genre yeah you you have to read there's no no two yeah. ways about it no but yeah. uh, anyway do you want me to tell you something about this one or do you want to wait until you see it? yes you know i mean it's it's a <laughs> the story is about the man that um is supposed to be dead you know a long time ago and then he turns up again pretty much yeah it's about a it's about a guy who gets a once in a lifetime opportunity to to fake his own death uh -huh. and on the spur of the moment he does yeah um and he disappears and he goes off to somewhere warm and he has a lovely job and he enjoys himself doing what he likes doing and he life is good yeah but after a few years he can see things happening at home that you know he really feels he ought to stick his fingers into because he has children and he had a wife as well and which he just walked away from mm. so he's against his better judgment he's tempted to go back and it's it's naturally not a great idea no and that's that's all i'll <laughs> but, <laughs> let's leave but it at yeah, that <laughs> this book has uh, has one of my uh, i hope one of my favorite detectives still you know gunna gunnhildur gisladottir yeah yeah she's in there yeah, yeah. oh yeah but she's not the main character in this one. Okay. She's she's still there, but it's it's more about um, uh, her sidekick Helgi. Okay. Uh -huh. So she, so he's he's the he's the one who sees the the disappeared man. Right. Because this is Iceland, and everybody knows everybody, and everybody's related to everybody. He sees this guy and thinks, I know him. Yeah. He's where from? Yeah. Yeah. He was he's dead, surely. Yeah. And she lets him. She allows him to pursue this investigation that he shouldn't be pursuing because he has better things to do. Yeah. So it's more, it's a little bit more about Helgi and his sort of chaotic life as well. Because okay. he, so, Helgi's life is chaotic and Gunnar's is fairly well ordered. Yes, yes, yes. I was, I was going to ask that we don't get any insight into her private life, this story then, you know. Uh, yeah, we get a little bit, but not, little not as much bit. as usual. No. Oh, but it's, it, but you get a lot more about this, um, about this strange renegade guy who, who disappears and comes back when he shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to reading it, Quentin. I, Good, I thank love, you. I love your stories. <laughs> <laughs> and I have your next one, but I haven't read it yet. No, you, you never read them. You just go, you dive straight in and translate as you read. Um, that keeps you going. No, I, I, I will read the first, I'll read enough to get the, um, to get the voice. Yeah. To, 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 under, to understand a bit, of, get a bit of insight into the characters and then, but I won't read the whole thing. Because mm -hmm. I, I want to have that little bit of what's coming next. Yes. Because I, I feel that does rub off in the, in the translation as well. Uh, yeah. uh, if I'm excited about it, then, then I hope the reader will be as well. Yeah. Much, much as I'm enjoying Solveig's book, I've, I have actually read it before. Oh, yeah. I know how it ends. Yes, yes. So, and that's not great. No. So uh, sorry. This is uh, this is a uh, uh, Solveig's book is really 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 good and uh, and I I am really looking forward to seeing um, to know what the what the uh, English speaking readers think of it. Yeah, it's a very Icelandic book, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yes. It's set in this place way out in the back of beyond. Yeah, yeah. Where no, not even tourists would go. No. But it's still, it's, it, it still has an, a very international theme about uh, forced labor or what you say, it's um, human it's trafficking, trafficking isn't it? it's essentially and all trafficking, these serious yeah. undertones. Yep. So, uh, and it's very, very creepy. I mean, it's, 
It's it is. It's as creepy as hell. Yeah. The old yeah. lady is. Just, you just want to run screaming from her. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and while we're here, um, what's happening with our? Just to dramatically change the subject. Yes. What's happening with our little project of Iceland Noir this year? Oh yes, uh, we are. Um, well, uh, we we uh, were left in a bit of a situation because our venue was. Um, was um, its function was cancelled and we don't know what will happen to it but uh, hopefully we have a new venue now and uh, so we are we are still planning as we will be going on with the festival okay. of course we don't know what covid 19 will do in the autumn but uh, we we hope uh, it will be possible for people to travel and come to iceland and uh, and enjoy the festival so um, Maybe it will be the Europe's uh, most popular festival because everyone is festival thirsty now because yeah. everything has been cancelled for a long time yeah. now. Tell me about it. Well, I haven't been anywhere. So the furthest I've been for two months is the, is the shop on the corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So uh, I, I hope we, we will go on. We have amazing headliners, uh, Ian Rankin and Anne Cleves, as you know. Uh, I mean, I hope it will go on, but... Um, Is that Quentin Bates bloke going as well? Yes, I've heard something about that. Okay, how about that, Paddy McGrain? Have you invited him as well? Yeah, I think he will be coming as well. Okay, Amazing chap, yeah. We have, uh, you know, we have such a, a lot of uh, a lot of people coming, so um, hopefully everything can go on. Uh, maybe in a bit of a different form, adapting to circumstance, but... Uh, but yeah, we are we are optimistic. Let's say that. Okay, good. Þetta þetta munur rétast. Þetta rétast. Þetta rétast.